At the end of every day of airbrushing, not only is it important to flush hot soapy water through the airbrush and take the needle out and clean it, but it's also very important to clean the spray regulator here. Now this spray regulator, I'm going to teach you how to clean it in such a way as to not damage it. Note that when you take the, uh, the spray regulator off, that the needle and nozzle are fully exposed. Now, it is best to actually have the needle remain in the airbrush when you take this front cap off. And the reason for that is that if you were to touch the nozzle, you could damage it very easily. But by having the needle fully inserted, pressed up against inside it, it means that the nozzle has a solid round metal object inside and if you were to touch it in any way, you can't damage it. You might inadvertently damage the point of the needle, but that's easier to fix and cheaper to re replace than to replace a damaged nozzle. Or you, you cannot repair a nozzle. You have to just replace it if you damage it. So, how to clean the spray regulator on your airbrush. Now, what you're going to need is some water, a cotton bud, a toothpick, and a toothbrush. And what I do is I start with just wetting the cotton bud and cleaning inside here. Press it in nice and tight and you can see all the junk coming out. Now it's still not perfectly clean and I'll just wet the other end and try the other end. It's now pretty clean but one thing I note is the cotton buds don't enable me to get right into the crevices and I find the toothbrush to actually be a lot more effective at getting right into the outer edges and cleaning it. You can see the difference in how clean that is now. As quick and easy as it is to clean the, the actual spray regulator using a toothbrush, using the toothbrush or the uh, cotton bud, there's one thing that I need to add and that is the actual cleaning of the plenum. Now the plenum is this little hole here in the center where the actual air comes out. And uh, it's very important that you don't use any sort of material that could actually damage it. By using a very soft wood toothpick, round toothpick, I'm able to make sure that the plenum is polished clean. And uh, so that's the last step. The one little thing that people often don't know, and you might even, if you've been working really heavily, have to do it from the opposite side and clean the plenum from the inside as well. The micro brushes can do the same sort of job, but those hard plastic devices, such as the micro brushes, I think aren't as suitable as such a soft wood material, such as the toothpick is, for cleaning inside here. So that's it one perfectly clean spray regulator that's now ready to put back on the actual airbrush. I suppose the last thing to add is that when putting the spray regulator back on, don't just close your eyes and hope for the best. Again, I always try and set up my fingers in such a way as that I can guide the actual spray regulator on and that way I'm not going to damage the end of the needle. But again, it's better to not be pulling back on the needle. You can see how I've pulled back on the trigger and it's now pulled the needle back. Because if I bump the nozzle, it'll damage it. It's better to have the needle fully forward so that you can't damage the nozzle. That's it. One beautifully clean spray regulator on an airbrush.